In the first three videos of my practical PID tuning series, I took you through the tune of a copter using Betaflight 261, all the way from the scratch defaults to the mostly final tune, I'd say at least a 90% uh, tune, maybe even a little more. Uh, and I didn't touch black box at all, but of course you wondered, and of course I wondered, what does it look like in black box? So the last thing I did before I finished the tune and, and closed out the series is I took a black box recording. And now we're going to look at it and we're going to see what it looks like. And this is a really good exercise for me because I've always said that the flight characteristics should dictate the tune. And if a copter flies good, then you should look at the black box log and say, what does a good flying copter look like? You should not look at the black box log and say, I have this preconceived notion of what the traces should look like, and therefore the copter must fly good when it looks like this. Well, there's a little give and take there. Obviously, if you see enough copters that fly good, you'll get a sense of what their black box logs tend to look like and be able to make a pretty good guess about whether a copter is flying good based on what its black box logs look like. But you should always recheck your assumptions, especially with something that moves as quickly as Betaflight. So by the way, that's a caveat for this one. This is Betaflight 261. A lot has changed in 27 and a lot has changed in 28. So exactly what we see here may not look exactly the same in those versions. What can you do? Uh, when I did this, 27 had just come out <laughs> and, uh, and, and now we're on 28 already and hey, that's, that's how life is. But let's take a look at this and see what it looks like. The first thing I'm going to do, as always, is look at the gyros. I'm going to zoom out and see how thick the lines look. And the lines do not look thick, really, at all. The motors on this copter are brand new RCX 2205-2633KV motors. So this shows that these motors are reasonably smooth. And that was my experience. The RCX motors are reasonably smooth uh, until you crash them a few times and then they very quickly get unsmooth uh, as opposed to some heavier duty motors that tend to stay smooth more through their lifetime. But we can see here that for the amount of vibration that the motors are making and for the amount of filtering that we currently have, which is just the default filtering on 261, they're very smooth traces. And in fact, we might even could reduce the amount of filtering to get thicker lines, noisier lines, but better performance out of the PID controller. In general, the less filtering you have, the more responsive the PID controller can get up to the point when the noise overwhelms the PID controller and then things get really bad. This may be a reason why Boris made the filters on 2.7 less aggressive. They let more noise in because Boris was probably looking at traces just like I am and saying, look, a lot of these copters can afford to have less filtering, and so we shouldn't let the worst of the of the bunch define the defaults. Looking at these gyros, I can see something is clearly going on here. This back and forth line here is probably some kind of oscillation. I don't know what's going on, but I certainly want to take a closer look at that. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a closer look at that. We'll take the zoom back to 100%. And which axis is oscillating the most? It's the red line, which is the roll axis. Let's look at the roll axis. We can see here that I dropped the throttle. The copter is now falling. It must be. It's falling and we're banking to the right. So we're doing sort of a right turn while we drop. And then as I raise the throttle again to catch the copter, we get this oscillation. This is classic prop wash oscillation. I know that it's prop wash oscillation because I can see that I lowered the throttle and was falling, and now I'm catching myself. One of the things I like to look at when assessing this sort of thing is I want to look at the motors and see if any motors zeroed out when I was dropping the throttle. If a motor zeroes out, then when you raise the throttle again, it may shudder a little bit uh, in order when, when it comes back up. Now we can see that this motor zeroed out. That just means that it hit min throttle. It doesn't mean that the motor actually stopped. And we can see that as I raise the throttle and the motor comes back up from zero, there is no sort of shuddering or anything like that. We don't see the motor output shoot up. If the motor output goes to zero and then as you raise the throttle, it shoots up, it means that the motor is not spinning up smoothly. The, the flight controller said, give me some more thrust, Scotty, and nothing happened. So it said, more, please, more, and it asked for more. And then finally, the motor comes online. Here we see the motor come online relatively smoothly. We don't see a big spike here. And we don't see the gyro flip out either. So we can conclude that although we zero the throttle, the motor did spin up smoothly, and we did not. Our, our, this tells us that our min throttle is potentially set correctly, although we would want to see more evidence and more different flight conditions before we were absolutely certain of that.
But this is a good example of what a correctly set min throttle should look like. As we raise the throttle, now the copter gets into a prop wash scenario. I'm going to turn the motors off. And we can see this oscillation happening. We can see that because, especially right here, the regularity of this oscillation, look at the frequency, look at the spacing between the peaks. Do you see how they're very consistently spaced? If you were to take a ruler there and you were to measure, you would see that the peaks are very consistently spaced. That is a sig symptom of p-term oscillation. P-term oscillation is largely determined by physical characteristics of the system. In other words, the motor-to-motor -motor distance, the mass distribution of the system, and the responsiveness of the motors. All of these things are fairly fixed. And when you get into a P-term oscillation scenario, it's similar to how if you were to take a pendulum and swing a pendulum, you release the pendulum, right? And the, 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 the period of the pendulum swing is a function of the length of the pendulum and the weight on the, on the bottom of the pendulum. That's it. It always swings the same. And that's why clocks used pendulums, uh, to, to keep time way back in the day because the period was fixed based on those two characteristics. And in the same sense, we have a fixed characteristic here where the frequency of the p-term oscillation will be determined by these mechanical characteristics that do not change. That is different from d-term oscillation, which is largely the result of an amplification of the noise and vibration in the system. So as the noise or vibration changes frequency, for example, the motors spin up or spin down, d-term oscillation will also change frequency, whereas p-term oscillation will usually have a fixed frequency, but almost always have a relatively fixed frequency. So we have p-term oscillation here, and also this smoothness of these lines is characteristic of p-term oscillation. We have smooth, almost sinusoidal shape in our oscillation. So we know that the p-term is doing this. So of course, one thing we could do is we could lower the p-term, but that may make the copter fly worse the rest of the time. We could also try raising the d-term, but my experience has been that until Betaflight 270, Raising the D-term wasn't very good, at least on the copters that I have. Maybe it's because of my ESCs or whatever. It wasn't very good at dealing with this. And oftentimes you would raise the D-term, the prop wash oscillation would not get significantly better, but other things would get worse. So this is a case where we can observe what's going on. We don't necessarily have any insight into how to fix it, at least until Betaflight 2.7. We could ask ourselves whether TPA is the right way to deal with this. Could TPA reduce the P-term and therefore reduce the oscillation? while still letting us have good uh, good P gains the rest of the time. But you can see that this is happening when the throttle is relatively low, 1327, and so 1466. So no, we would TPA is not the right answer to this. This is not a high throttle scenario. This is because prop wash is changing the aerodynamic situation very rapidly. It just can't keep up. And if we look here, instead of a, a sinusoidal shape, now we start to see some irregularity in the oscillation. Do you see how the peak here kind of doesn't turn into a sine wave, but it kind of goes zoop, zoop, you know. This is an example of D-term uh, affecting the, P the PIDs more. So this is telling us that the D gain is, is now becoming, if not dominant, at least a significant contributor to these oscillations. Another thing we could certainly try to do is we can play with the filtering. As I said before, less filtering means less delay. And for a rapidly changing situation like prop wash, the less delay you have, the better. Therefore, it, we could certainly try to increase the cutoff frequency of the gyro and the D-term filter to see if that helps things. Okay, so that's what's going on there. Here's another low throttle drop. Let's take a look at what happens here. Here I raise the throttle. Not much, nothing happened. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you why. But in this case, it stays relatively clean. As we go through this scenario, we're at about mid throttle. This is fairly, this is not very clean or smooth. We're seeing some high frequency that is very narrow spikes. And this again is indicative of D-term noise. This is D-term amplifying noise in the system. That's what we're seeing here. However, the copter is flying very well. And I would, I, I might, if you showed me this trace in a vacuum, say, hmm, maybe that's noisy or a little on the edge of, of too noisy. But actually, because I know the copter's flying well, I can recalibrate my internal reference for what too noisy or too clean or whatever is and say, this is actually okay. And that's really the point of this exercise. Some activity here, nothing problematic. This is, this just looks like we see some surging in the P term, but nothing that looks like a hard oscillation. 
like before, just working. Here we start to see some harder oscillations. They're not very tall in magnitude. It's their regularity that stands out to me. When the p-term starts looking like a regular sine wave, that's when we're getting into some tuning issues. And notice that the gyro is also mirroring this. This is not just something that's happening under the hood. It's actually visible and audible in the camera because we can see the gyro spiking as well. The spikes grow as I raise the throttle. Some hard spikes here as I start to turn and drop the throttle. So I could keep going through the file like this, but in general, what we're seeing here is that the copter is flying very well a lot of the time, and we're just getting these oscillations at the edges of the tuning envelope. Here we can see the I term zero out as I go into a higher uh, rate move. I deflect the stick more, and it passes the threshold where the copter zeroes out the I term. That works very differently in 2.7 and 2.8, so don't expect to see this exact behavior in 2.7 and 2.8. And again, we've got a little bit of oscillations. But I want you to go back. I want you, and we're, I won't do this right now, but you should go back and watch the Practical PID Tuning uh, Video 3 and just watch the flight videos and see how the copter is flying during the different scenarios. This is the last scenario. This is the result of the final tune there. I think you'll see that although this log, we see these cases where there's, there's this strong oscillation, it, it, when you look at the video, the copter is flying very well. So, not a lot going on here a lot of the time. It's very docile, and it almost, if, again, if you were to show me this in a vacuum and it would show me things like this, I might almost say that the copter could stand to have more gain on this, on the P, more roll P gain to get these terms more active. But the fact that we see that in certain scenarios, we get this prop wash oscillation would put the brakes on that. So we start to see the term get active here. And that would tell us if, if we only ever saw quiet periods like this and it never got active, we would say, okay, we need to raise it. But I want you to notice that, that with the copter correctly tuned or, or close to correctly tuned, we still get lots of periods where the P term and the D term are not very active, depending on what we're doing with the sticks. But the fact that we see these oscillations come out during some scenarios like prop wash, that tells us that we actually don't have a lot of room to raise the P gain or the D gain. But notice that at no point, almost no point, do we see very high magnitude strong oscillations. Almost no point are we seeing that kind of thing and that tells us that we're we're probably not over the line on a tune see here here we see oscillations start to come out but here it's coming out they generally don't last very long and they don't get super high magnitude also they're not these they're usually not the clean smooth sinusoidal shapes they're more irregular. And that, that tells us when you see the clean, smooth sinusoidal shapes, the copter is just kind of shaking itself. As you know, it's it, the PID loop is is just holding on for dear life like a like a cowboy riding a bull. In a scenario like this, where we see this irregularity in the P-term trace, the PID loop is still it's holding on, but it's still sort of steering the horse. Like maybe a maybe a bronco, not a bull, right? It's still able to kind of steer the copter and do its job. It's not just sort of holding on for dear life. And so when we see these irregular, you see the oscillations come out, but they're not that smooth sinusoidal shape. They're irregular. It means the PID loop is working. It's doing its job. We would rather not see the oscillations, but we're still, we're sort of on the edge, but we're not over the edge. And that's kind of where I want it to be. Let's take a look at the pitch axis. I don't think we'll see very much different on the pitch axis. And in fact, if we've correctly tuned our PIDs, we should see similar things on the pitch axis. It's common to undertune the pitch axis because you tune the pitch and the roll axis together. And then when the, when the roll axis is done, you stop tuning entirely and the pitch axis has more to go because of the weight distribution of the copter. Now this is a pure X frame. So we actually should, should expect to see the pitch and the roll axis pretty similar. Let's find out. And in fact, the PID gains I ended up with were very similar. So we'll go back here and we'll look and again, we see that smooth right turn, drop the throttle, and as I raise the throttle, boom, same thing. We see the oscillations happening, very similar response. Not much going on at some times, like right here, we can see that's very, very little going on because we're not doing very much with the sticks. 
and occasionally these oscillations come out. So comparing the pitch to the roll axis, we see a very similar uh, distribution of, of sometimes there's oscillation, but there's not really super strong oscillation, and a lot of times it's quiet. So this suggests that the pitch and the roll axis are, are both sort of correctly tuned. Finally, we'll look at the yaw axis. And on the yaw axis, I'm going to be looking for very strong oscillations, especially in the P term. And I see almost nothing. In fact, let's just take the yaw axis. Let's take the smoothing out of the yaw axis so we can see what's really going on. So even with, with the smoothing turned off, we can see that the yaw axis has almost no oscillation. And I would take this as an indication that the yaw P gain could really stand to come up. We do have these little twitches here. These worry me. Now, this is a, a MCU 6050 on this on this uh, flight controller. So I don't think we're going to have issues with gyro noise, but I do think it's interesting that we see it is hard mounted. These little twitches coming through here may be an indication. Yeah, look how regular they are. What is that? I have no idea. I'm at a complete loss. It's a 6050, so we don't have an issue with the noise spec or whatever's going on with the 6500. And it is hard mounted, so I don't know what that could be. This regularity here, that's not an accident. But overall, we don't see a lot of activity or oscillation on the, on the pitch, uh, P term, or the yaw P term. And that suggests to me that maybe the yaw P gain could come up, uh, and that would help sharpen up the flight feel in turns. It's a little harder for me to tune the yaw P gain by feel versus the black, black, black box. Uh, but uh, but this this looks notice that there's just no time when the yaw p term gets even a little bit oscillaty and this looks almost a little too docile there's just no time when the yaw axis even gets close if you're a race car driver and you're going around the track and i don't hear your wheels squealing you're not going fast enough so I would almost, I would I would even turn the P gain up on yaw on this one. So that's certainly something I could do to improve my tune. But I would definitely oh here here see this this is the yaw P term actually waking up and getting active. Do you see how we, it's almost never doing this? See how it's surging a little here? It almost never does this, and that tells me that my yaw P gain is a little too low. Oh, and here a little active here. All right, well, if you have any other questions about this or anything else that I missed, let me know in the comments. I'll definitely be happy to address that. Uh, but that's that's this is what the black box log looks like for a copter that I have tuned to sort of the what I would call maybe the 90% level visually. Now, this is on Betaflight 261, and things would be very different on 27 and 28. Uh, I did upgrade this copter to 27. Uh, but apparently I looked, looked through my archive and I apparently did not actually record the process. I guess I just said, screw it. Let's just see what I can do. I'm tired of this. So unfortunately, I do not have a separate tuning process for 2.7 like I hoped that I would. That's life. I'm sure I will get you more stuff going forward. But for now, that's all. Happy flying.